Hey guys, welcome to another Conversations. I'm Dr. Pete with my son Eli. We're talking about the things of God. Really, what? how do you live a godly life in the midst mm. of an ungodly world? And we've talked about everything from faith to hope to yep. trust to really just living out this life. But today I want to talk about what it means to live a crucified life. Mm. The Bible says in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ as nevertheless not I who lives anymore but Christ who lives within me. In the life that I live in this natural realm, I live by faith in the Son of God. So you know, wow. let's talk about that. What it truly means to be crucified in this life and to yeah. be dead of ourselves. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's so awesome um, because, you know, Jesus, what he's doing is he's calling us to deny ourselves and walk with him daily, right? It's no longer our own life, it's his. And it's like, you know, uh, when Jesus came down and died on the cross, he gave his life for us so that we could have eternity with him, right? And so now, you know, in order to receive him, right, we lay our lives down for him, right? It's like I lay my own agenda. I lay my own selfish needs, wants, and desires. Mm -hmm. I lay those things down and I follow Jesus, right? It's like, you know, even Jesus talks about it. He's like, look, leave everything behind and follow me. Mm. Yeah. It's like that stuff doesn't matter. Leave it, follow me. And so that's what Jesus is calling us to do is, is deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily. It's an everyday thing that we can walk with God in this way. I think the cool and the most freeing thing is that the, everything that God's calling us to leave behind wasn't ours to begin with. Yeah. When we were originally created, when Adam and Eve were created in the Garden of Eden, when God created mankind in his image and in his likeness, God created humans, each and every one of us, to be recipients of his love, expressions right. of his goodness throughout the earth. And when we are in communion with God, we take on the nature of God. In right. fact, the more we spend time with God, we become an expression of love, and love is selfless. Wow. As a result of the fall of man, when Adam and Eve sinned, mm. the evidence was man became self-centered. In fact, yep. Adam says, hey, it's her fault. Yep. Instantly, mankind began to live at the benefit of their, themselves at the expense of another individual. Mm. But when Jesus came to free us from ourselves, that's what he did. Jesus came to free me from me yeah. so I could live at the benefit of you, so yeah. I could be a reward for your life. Yeah. And only Jesus can do that. So when Jesus says in, in Matthew 16, 24, it says, hey, if you want to be my disciple, there's one requirement. You must deny yourself, yeah. pick up your cross, and follow me. So you know, what does that truly mean to live out practically on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what he says. It's laying your own life down for him. And so, you know, what that can mean, honestly, is simply being like, okay, Lord, I, I know I've been, I've been living my own way. I've been living my own selfish wants and desires, but, but what's your purpose on my life? What are you calling me to? Not what am I calling myself to? Not what am, what am I searching for? What am I looking for? No, it's like, Lord, how, how can I partner with you in what you're doing around the world? I think, I think that's the important thing is that, look, we're all on a mission. What's that mission to, to fight the good fight of faith? And, you know, at the end of the day, make heaven more crowded, right? Like we want to share the good news yeah. of Jesus, right? And so that's what that is. It's, it's, it's beginning to actually lay your own self, your yeah. life down for him. And I think if we're not careful, the gospel becomes a prayer we pray to get to heaven one day. Yeah. And all of a sudden we have this sugar daddy. We have this genie in a bottle, so to speak. And we have God there to endorse our self-centered life. God's not there to endorse our self-centered life. In mm. fact, God's there to transform our life. He's there to free us from ourselves so we can yep. live for him. And I tell you what, it's the most amazing life ever. When yeah. each and every day I wake up and I live a surrendered life yeah. where my life is no longer my own. The Apostle Paul says, I must decrease, God must increase. And that's the life we need to live each and every day. But I tell you what, it's a not a debilitating life, it's a freeing life. Mm. When I truly lay down my agenda, when I basically say to the Lord, Lord, I'm the clay, you're the potter. And the clay does not have the right to tell the potter how to use me. Lord, I offer you my life today. Use me for your glory. And I promise you, when we lay down our life, when we lay down our agenda, when we surrender our lives to the living God, he can do something yep. so miraculous and so special with it. Yep, uh, it's, you know... Um, but the funny example is when you get squeezed, right? Are you giving Jesus or are you giving, you know, just some horrible, horrible response to somebody, right? That, that's a real easy test. 
of being like, okay, you know, a, a funny example of this is, you know, I heard a preacher say it one time. He said, well, how can a dead man be offended, right? If I die to myself, how can I be offended when somebody else, you know, comes at me and comes against me, right? But I should be giving Jesus. I should be giving Jesus through the whole thing. And that's kind of like an easy hmm. little test right there. It's like, okay, well, like something's going on. What's wrong? I need to take a step back and actually evaluate yeah. what's going on. And it is. It is a good litmus test for all of us. It's, are you being offended? Uh -huh. In fact, the Lord spoke to me years ago and he said, son, why are you so offended? He goes, if you were dead to yourself, you can't offend a dead person. Yeah. And each and every day, Jesus, just watch this, Jesus came to free me from myself uh -huh. so I could live for the benefit of others. Yeah. And, but that only happens when I live a life in intimacy with God. When I wake up every day just enjoying my God, enjoying the fact that I'm his son, enjoying the fact that he establishes me in his worth, value, and identity as yep. a child of God, where only a creator has a right to define his creation, mm -hmm. and he proves my worth and value when he went to a cross and he was willing to die in my place. So everything I'm giving up wasn't mine to begin with. Yep. The living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, thought I was mm -hmm. worth dying for, and so every day it's a privilege to live for him. But I'm the clay, he's the potter. I'm yeah. the one that's laying down my life. And I think for me personally, I, there's many days that I wake up and I have an agenda mm. that I want God to just serve me, mm. that I want God to just meet my needs. Yep. But Jesus came to satisfy me so completely that there's nothing I actually need. Yeah. A life intimate with God, a life so surrendered to God that I begin to know the width and length and depth and height of his love that passes knowledge that I'm filled with all the fullness of God, where he's my shepherd and I shall not want, it's completely satisfied in my father's mm. love so that I can live for the benefit of others. But if I'm looking for other things to satisfy me, it's hard to live a crucified life. Only when my God satisfies me, only when he fulfills the longings of my heart, only when I get yep. established in who I am, who's him, and who my God is, can I truly live a surrendered life. Yeah, you know, it's like even the Word of God says it's like we're new creations in Christ, right? Even in Ephesians 4.17, it says you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, right? Like you should no longer walk in your old life. For if you knew what Jesus had did for you, right? If you truly knew what Jesus did for you, it's like you wouldn't even want to be in that old life. You wouldn't even want to walk that way. And so it's it's really walking in that new creation, right? It's like when you were saved, it's like, look, that old stuff is dead and gone. It's like you are now a new creation in Christ. And so we need to actually be able to start walking that out, right? And what that simply looks like is not walking in the things of the world. And it's like, yeah, some days like that's easier said than done, sure. Um, but it's 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 starting to to walk towards that yeah. that you know that that goal of hey no it's like I'm supposed to walk in this new light but if I ne if you never see yourself and for what Jesus did for you you'll never be able to walk that out like if mm. you continue to see yourself for your old life your old nature your old old self and you don't see yourself for what Jesus did for you you don't see yourself as that new creation you'll never be able to walk out the new creation because you identify so much with the old self yeah. the old life that that's all you're thinking about that's all you're focused on is everything you did in the past rather than just focusing on Jesus you know I think sometimes we have so many problems in life what we do is we focus so so hard on trying to fix these problems on our own rather than just looking at the solution the solution is yeah. Jesus that's it and so um, just a, you know, just a challenge like, hey, like when you're going through something, when you're being tempted, when you're when you're having struggles, right? Focus your eyes on Jesus, yeah. the solution, the answer, the truth, right? Rather than the problem. And our answer is so much bigger than any problem you could ever face. Yeah. Our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. Amen. David said, "Magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt His name together. Let's put Him back in the throne of our life." You know, Jesus described a parable or it, when he was with his disciples and he says, you cannot pour out new wine into an old wineskin, mm. otherwise that wineskin will burst. You can only pour new wine into a new wineskin so that it can handle it. The mm. new wine is the realities of heaven. Yeah. Experiences the realities of heaven now that I'm a child of God on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. That new wine though can only be poured out into a new wineskin. Well, what's yeah. that new wineskin? It's a selfless life. 
It's a life that's crucified. When my life is no longer my own, when I live completely for the glory of God, that wineskin can handle heaven. Amen. And that wineskin is love. It, love is a selfless life. But the only way I can actually walk in love is by living a life of surrender. Amen. In fact, the Bible says, the moment one surrenders to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is removed and mm. now I begin to see. And it's like I look at my father in the mirror and I'm transfigured in the very image and likeness of God. The more you spend time yep. with the living God, enjoying his word, the yep. water of his yep. word, spending time in worship, spending time in intimacy with God, the more we're transfigured into his very image. We mm. take on the nature of God. In fact, the litmus yep. test the Bible says is this is a sign that you know him intimately. You walk in love. Mm. Walking in love is a selfless life. It's a yep. crucified life where I live for the benefit of others at my expense. Why? Because it's not my expense. Everything I gave up wasn't mine to begin with. Yep. And nothing can compare to being completely satisfied in the living God. Hmm. Amen. Um, you know, so so where's, where's some place that people can go? Maybe scripturally, if they don't even know hmm. where that's at in scripture. Like what are some, you know, really good places where people could start? Maybe it's a book. Maybe hmm. it's, you know... Um, what, what are some examples of that for people? I think the biggest thing for me, just what's coming to my spirit right now is Psalms mm -hmm. 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Like just mm -hmm. such a good verse when I take my relationship with God personal. David says, he's yeah. my shepherd. I love to talk about my Jesus because mm -hmm. Jesus desires to be personal with us. Looking yeah. in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus and says, Hey guys, you've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness, but you've been living your life as beggars. So for three chapters, he says, this is who you now are. And he establishes them in their identity as children of God. So he wants you to understand Amen. that the width and length and depth and height of God, that passes knowledge, you would filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. God loves you so much. He proved it when he sent his son to die in your place. And when we just begin to experience the goodness of God and let the mercies of God kiss our lives, we begin to experience this whole new life. And it makes it easier for us to lay down our life, realizing everything we're laying down wasn't ours to begin with. And it Amen. can't compare to a life in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, if I pray that you've been encouraged by today. I just want you to know that these conversations are simply here to encourage you, to let you know that your life is worth it, that you have yep. great significant yep. worth and value in the eyes of God. And we're here to just encourage you in your walk with the Lord. But if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, there's not a better time than right now. I want you to know this. You were created mm. to be in relationship with God. The yep. living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth created you with destiny Amen. and that is restored our relationship with god is re restored when we realize that hey living without christ living a life outside of a relationship with god is a lie mm. that i wasn't created for and so it's simply saying lord i acknowledge that i was created to be in relationship with you and that jesus christ is the gift that you sent to the earth to lay down his life go to a cross yep. take the death sentence on my life because of sin put it upon you and he died in our place. And the Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. My friends, you are whosoever and so am I. And when you simply call on the name of Jesus Christ, when you surrender your lives to him, he welcomes you into the family of God. And if you are here today and you are watching and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, let me lead you in a prayer of salvation. Mm. Simply a prayer of surrender between you and the living God. Pray this prayer out loud after me from the comforts of where you're watching. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Today I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are the one and only true and perfect God and there's no salvation except through Jesus Christ. And I believe that when you came to the earth, died on a cross and rose from the dead, completely paid for the sins that have kept me from you. So today I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I choose this day to serve you and serve you only. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for receiving me as your child. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Friend, if you just pray that simple prayer, I truly believe you're now a child of God. You have been forgiven of all of your sins. The Spirit of God now lives yep. within your heart. And the Bible promises that even when you die one day, you will wake up in heaven with God and live with him forever. Amen. Friends, it's been an honor to have you with us. We will see you next time.